welcome back to my channel and welcome to a new series that I will be doing on my channel for this new year. This new series that I'm going to be doing is called Winning Wednesdays. It's where I'm going to be coming on and just giving you some words of encouragement to help you win in this life. And yes, it is coming from a biblical perspective because that's the only way that I know how to win is by doing things God's way. So we're going to jump right into today's video. I'm so excited to be giving you this word of encouragement for this week. So I know it's a new year and every time, you know, we come into a new year, it's like new year, new me, right? And there's just lots of goals and habits and things that we want to try to change, you know, and do differently. But maybe we're 20 17 almost 20 days in and you've kind of gotten a little discouraged because maybe you have brought over some of those old habits old mindsets and old things that you used to do that you just can't seem to shake and you're struggling with them and you've gotten disappointed because you've tried to track it and it's just not working out for you the way that you want and you you're just like down in despair well i want to give you some hope today and I want for you to journey with me to the book of Romans, chapter 7, starting at verse number 14, all the way to chapter 8, the entire chapter 8. And what the Lord has for me to share with you all today, I am sure is going to bless you. So in this book here, we have Paul. He is writing this book to us and he is letting us know about some struggles that we are going to experience in our lives. Letting us know that in our lives, we are not without struggle. Struggle is always going to be there. It's going to be apparent that we struggle, but do not get discouraged if you're struggling with overcoming your struggles because Jesus Christ has come, he's lived and he's died for us to be able to get through these things. So I'm gonna read it really quickly for you. Y'all bear with me, hope I don't mess up. All right, so here we go. All right, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold as a slave to sin, for I do not understand what I am doing because I do not practice what I want to do, but I do what I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, I agree with the law that it is good. So now I am no longer the one doing it, but it is the sin living in me. For I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my flesh. For the desire to do what is good is within me, but there is another, there is no ability to do it. For I do, I do not do the good that I want to do, but I practice the evil that I do not want to do. Anybody struggling with your struggles, wanting to overcome those habits, and you're trying to figure out why. Let's keep reading. So I discovered this law. When I want to do what is good, the evil is present within me. For in my inner self, I delight in God's law. But I see a different law in the parts of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and taking me prisoner to the law of sin in the parts of my body. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me? From this body of death. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So then with my mind, I myself am serving the law of God, but with my flesh, the law of sin. So therefore, there is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus, because the law of the spirit of life in Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. But the law, what the law could not do, since it was weakened by the flesh, God did. He condemned sin in the flesh by sending his own son in his likeness of sinful flesh as a sin offering in order that the law's requirement would be fulfilled in us to do not fulfill and fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit for those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit have their minds set on the things of the spirit. Now the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the spirit is life and peace. The mindset of the flesh is hostile to God because it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it is so unable to do so. 
Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And if indeed the spirit of God lives within you, if anyone does not have the spirit of God or of Christ, he does not belong to him. Now, if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also bring you bring your mortal bodies to life through the spirit who lives within you. So from that part, what the Lord wanted me to share is this. The Lord is saying here, yes, there are times in our lives that we will struggle because we are made of flesh. More than likely, we will have struggles until the day we die. But because we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, he is the one who will rescue us and help us with our struggles because we believe in him and we trust in him and we do not feel shame and we don't have to feel shame because even though we keep failing, we continue to trust in God because we know that Jesus is the one that can help us. So we keep coming to Jesus, bringing those things to him because we know he is the one to put to death those things that we are struggling with because he came to give us a life more abundantly in him. And he left us with his Holy Spirit so that we will be able to overcome those things by walking in his spirit and allowing the Holy Spirit to come in us. But we must fully surrender to God and do not feel obligated to live in your flesh. When Jesus was already, um, when Jesus, um, don't you don't have to feel obligated to live in your flesh because Jesus has already come to give us life in the spirit. So let's continue on reading. So then brothers and sisters, we are not obligated to live in our flesh and to live according to the flesh because if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. But if you live by the spirit, you will put those deeds of body to uh, those deeds to death and the body will live for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. Instead, you received the spirit of adoption where you can cry out, Abba, Father, the spirit himself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children. And if his children also heirs and heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, and then indeed we will suffer with him so that we in him, we may also be glorified. So listen, we don't have to worry about those struggles that we go through because Jesus already knows. God already knew that we were going to be struggling with these things, that these things were going to have us at a grip and make us feel disappointed within ourselves and make us feel that we are condemned. But yet we are not condemned, brothers and sisters. We do not have to feel obligated or be enslaved to those things that are troubling our hearts that we are struggling with. We do not have to be in chains of those things. We are more than overcomers. Why? Because we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy compared to the glory that is going to be revealed uh, within us. In the same way, the spirit also helps us in our weaknesses because we do not know what to pray for as we should, but the spirit himself intercedes for us with unspoken groanings. So anytime that we are struggling and we're at that point where we're like, why, why, Lord, why can't I overcome this? Why can't I get over this? Why do I keep falling into this same trap of temptation? I thought I was already over this. I thought I was able to con conquer this. Why, why, why? Our spirit, the spirit that God knows that is living with inside of us is also crying out to the father on our behalf, helping us to overcome those things. So he intercedes for us. We will know we for he intercedes for us. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. For we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son so that he would be the firstborn among the brothers and sisters. He already knew. And those things that we struggle with, he already knew it was going to take some time because why he's conforming us, he's shaping us and he's molding 
shaping us into his image. So yes, we are crying out to him saying, why Lord, I had this plan in place. I've sought your face and I've, you've given me this vision of where I need to be and where I need to go. But yet I'm not doing anything or everything that I'm doing, I'm still not doing enough to make those things come to pass or I can't meet those goals. What is happening? But God already knows because he's already predestined us and he's working that thing out with us in us. So all of those things are, are working together for our good. So, and those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified, which is why there is no condemnation for us that live in Christ Jesus. We don't have to feel shame about those things because God has already justified us and glorified us. What then shall we say to these things, these struggles? What then can you start to say to your struggles? If God is for us, who is against us? He did not even spare his own son, but offered him up for us all. How will he not also want him? How will he not also with him grant us everything? Who can bring an accusation against God's elect? That's you and me. God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Jesus Christ is the one who died, but even more has been raised. He is the one at the right hand of God and intercedes for us. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or the pandemic or anything or any danger or sword? Be as it is written, because of you, we are being put to death all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. The enemy knows where you're trying to go. He already knows that you've set this goal and set these plans because you're trying to get to a better you, a better place in God. But yet he's coming and he wants to put you to death every single day. But God is fighting for you. Now in all things, we are more than, no, now in all things that we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present or things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any any other creature or thing created will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So God, he has given us freedom, not in a form of, of, of fear, but he has given us freedom and love. And this love keeps us bound with a clear mind where we can cry out to God in his spirit. For one day, we will not have to worry about those struggles. We'll, we'll see ourselves as more than overcomers. The spirit knows you and the spirit knows me. And the spirit intercedes for us each and every time we struggle. So the struggles that we have, God is using those for our good. Each and every time we fail, each and every time we can't mark that X on our habit tracker. Each and every time we can't say we met our goal at this time. Don't worry about that. Start again. Keep going. Keep pressing. Keep pressing. Why? Because God is working all those things out for your good. And God already knew that you were going to have those struggles. He already knew that there was going to be something to keep you from getting to that goal or meeting that goal. But if you seek him and if you ask him to continue to help and lead and guide you, he will. You must trust that he will help you because God is our cheerleader. Who can be against us? He is there fighting along for us. He knows our struggles. He knows the tools that we need to fight with. And that is his Holy Spirit, which is why we must open ourselves up to allow the Holy Spirit to come into our lives and help us and lead us and guide us and teach us because the enemy, he wants to tempt you all day long. He does not want you to make it to that habit tracker and put yes that I did that. He does not want you to make it to the end of that goal and say, yes, I did that because he knows what's going to happen. You're changing, you're growing, you're becoming a better person in God, a better servant for, for God and for yourself and for your family and for your community. And the enemy knows that when you start to meet those goals, when you start to do those things, that it's going to impact change for generations and for the future. And he does not want that to happen. So I encourage you today to trust in the Lord. Know that you are more, more than a conqueror because God loves you. He loves me so much. Don't fret, daughter, brother, sister, cousin. Don't fret because 
There is not one struggle that you can go through that will ever separate you from God. Nothing, no failure, nothing can ever separate you from the love of God. Why? Because we are sealed with his love. And his love is so great, so vast, so depthful, so bountiful, and so beautiful that nothing can separate us from him. Nothing, nothing that we could ever do. Why? Because we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ and he loves us. So thank you so much for joining me for Winning Wednesdays. I can't wait to see you all again next week to continue to encourage you. Thank y'all for joining and I'll see y'all in the next one. Yeah.